we're basically at the midway point of the season. We so where do we leave off? Really, like that's I guess you should probably give a recap. The big cliffhanger is that Magra made her presence known, which now you realize she is Princess Magra, she is the sister of Queen Kane. And at this point, we don't know if she's the younger sister or the older sister or the half. Like we don't really know much. Yeah. Um, so that happened, and we actually don't pick up in this episode immediately with her situation. You pick up with the Baba Voss and family, and then you realize that Boots is up to something fishy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that, I do like that decision by the writers because leaving you with the cliffhanger, right? And Because they release these week by week, right? So yep. say so we're watching this real time. Um, you know, last week we see that big cliffhanger, but then this week we're like, okay, what's going on with that? They don't give it to you right away. You know what I mean? They like make yeah. you wait for it. Like, no, we're going to dump you here. <laughs> Knowing you know, you remember what happened, but like, no, we're going to make you wait like yeah. five, five, 10 minutes in before we give you that. So they I respect the audience enough. I think that, I think that's a good, um, I think that's a good point. Because I think a lot of the, like, serialized TV where it's, like, 25 episodes a season or whatever, they lean on more that you forget things that happened. And then they write out plot holes as they, yeah. <laughs> as they forget, as you're, they're hoping your audience forgets things. And so it's not conducive to binge watching. Yeah. Um, whereas this show, I think it respects the audience enough to be able to remember things and to at least be engaged enough in the story to want to know what happens and that's where i was like i'm like oh right there was more of like oh yeah baba voss and them are going to be freaking out not that they know this thing and so it's like i think it's fun when the writers let the audience in on the secret right or yeah. like in on the plot details and it's like oh how are they going to react when they find out the situation or you're kind right. of waiting for it to happen yeah it's a, it's really smart because it builds so much tension that way because you know what's going on, but they don't know. Yeah. And so this whole time you're just waiting, like, what's going to happen when they find out? Um, and, like, we'll see how long that secret goes on for. But, I mean, you know, like, that's not going to just roll over smoothly. That's going to be right. a big deal. <laughs> that's going to be a big deal. So, um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, it just adds that other layer of, damn, that's going to be a big thing when it happens. And to kind of go back to is so with Boots, so his little deal is that he goes, oh, I saw her show herself to the witch finder and that he drew a weapon and that she was dead. And us as the audience are kind of like, wait, what? That's a, that's a lie. Like, you know, it's a lie. Yeah. And, and yet they have to trust him to that. He's telling the truth. And so immediately you're like, what's going on? And he's like, well, we need to make a decision on what we're going to go do. Hanwa in character goes, we need, we're not, we have to fight. Like, we're going to go find her. We, I'm saving my mother, period. And then Bob Voss kind of overrides it and says, nope, you're, we're keeping you safe. We're going to go hide until we figure out what the situation is, especially if she is dead. Yeah. I don't know. Super tough decision, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. That, uh, that brought up a question when I was watching it this time. Um, I, well, so first time I watched <laughs> when, when Boots was like oh yeah I saw them kill her I my goofy self was like wait what and I went back to the last episode I'm like that's not what happened <laughs> so I went back I was like that's not what and I was like oh he's lying <laughs> I was just like okay uh, like am I re-remembering like, something wrong here <laughs> yeah I was like dude I swear I was like tripping but <laughs> um <laughs> so but then with that decision that they they come to where it's you know either you know keep moving or go get my growth I was surprised because it, it looks like as we as we open here, um, you know, you show Baba Voss who's just like like it, I think it opens on him like killing someone pretty yes. nasty, right? Um, and I'm like, it looks like they killed that whole team or like the majority of it because there's a lot of people looking for him and they're like all dead at this point. I was just like, I'm surprised that Baba Voss wasn't like, no, like I'm pissed, let's go. You know what right. I mean? Um, and maybe that speaks more to his the paternal aspect that's mm -hmm. like growing in him and where he's like maybe the old him would have been like nah we're going yeah um but as his like character is developing and he's <clears throat> caring more and more for his kids he's like i can't risk it um so i thought that was an interesting like little piece but just pretty yeah. interesting i i thought it was because the they had the the pouch 
that was like soaked in blood, which I found that a little interesting. I don't know where they I don't, did Paris hand that to him or was that Boots that handed it to him? Or no, it was Hanwa that handed it to him. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a little bit interesting just because like that little token, because it was so important to her, the fact that it's covered in blood and empty, I think kind of persuaded him, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because there was kind of this, the, the token item that is of utmost importance. So she would leave it behind and it would be empty. It means like something really bad happened. Um, So I think that's why he didn't push the subject and just, the, I, maybe partly the chaos of the situation too um yeah. but then that boots is just kind of like oh yeah i know a place this is where my you know tribe is from or i know a cave kind of thing and they just kind of go with it i'm like hmm it's like the, yeah. the i don't know it felt weird because of how just like how fast they just trust this unknown quantity they, they kind of met him last episode right um he initially was trying to kill him but. right like, yeah like like he stole all their things and now it's like oh wait never mind he's our half brother he's good like yeah. we got him you know even though and they maybe, don't know anything and maybe that's why maybe um maybe it's like okay well he can see like us he has you know our blood he wouldn't betray us and they just take it for granted um I mean. but it was interesting i was like i'm surprised they're just like all right yeah let's go wherever like one, why didn't he mention? Unless he did, and I forgot. That's fair, but mm-hmm. he didn't mention it when they first met him. Like I know this place we can go to. Um, yeah. So I thought that was interesting too. Why no one was like, why haven't you mentioned this before? Yeah, especially um, if they were like hiding from them. Yeah. Last episode. Right. Type thing. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. But, and then I get the other part was so they finally after this whole thing's going down, they're traveling toward the cave. They cut back finally to uh, Magra, and she's talking to Tamakta June inside of a, one of the central tents or like the, the general's tent, it looks like. Um, yeah. And he's basically not really interrogating her, but he's just confused. He's like, you're supposed to be dead. And here you're not, <laughs> for one thing. Yeah. And two, it's like, you know, like what has happened? Like it's been 20 something years probably that they have seen each other and the last thing they knew is it she was gone or rumored to be dead and i thought the way they did this flashback was actually really interesting Uh, i'm kind of skipping apart but we'll come back to it um and at first i thought i was being told from the perspective of queen kane which it wasn't (laughs) after you find out where where it's coming from and i just I feel like Tamakta June is less of a bad guy now than he has felt <laughs> this whole time. Like he yeah. just kind of stuck in the middle of all these orders and just, you know, being a good soldier in, for in a lot of ways. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's, it's interesting because at the beginning in the pilot, I think he's, he came off as a very kind of ruthless person. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is the years, because again, this is like, he says half a lifetime. I think we're, we're saying it's like 20 years, like transpire from the pilot till now. Yeah. Um, and it might be just, he's like aging and like not becoming softer, but just that ruthlessness is kind of diminishing as he gains wisdom and, you know, age and stuff like that. Um, but he seems like he's really just dutiful. Like he's just doing yeah. what he signed up to do, what his task is. And that's it. But he still like cares because during that conversation with Magra, you can tell he like cared about her, not in a romantic way, but like in a like a almost like a big brother way, almost. Yeah, it definitely felt more like a familial like. I feel like, it almost felt like he let her down. The kind of like feeling, yeah. where like yeah. he's he felt like he should have tried harder than like just believe the rumor or whatever the thought was because they never clearly never found a body or anything like that. They just said she's dead. And he's like, right. oh, I guess so. Um, <laughs> you know, shrugged and moved on. <laughs> um, it was it's just an interesting dynamic that you, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird seeing like the softer side of these like, ev- in quotes, evil characters um, yeah. or being showed as evil throughout the show. And you're just like, wait a minute. They're, like, it's just so many more moving parts than you would have anticipated which kind of goes back to the Queen Kane story where 
she's kind of it's like the, this is the first time you see her in kind of like rags too so you see yeah. her in not her what queenly attire i guess royal attire <laughs> um and she's basically adjusting i don't even know if that's the right word <laughs> very yeah not easily <laughs> adjusting to slave life of, of working in a, a silk farm i guess or silk processing factory <laughs> yeah whatever whatever you want to call where she's at I mean, it's kind of, it's funny seeing her. To me, it, there's like a bit of humor here because uh, I think this was at like the later part, but you even made a note <laughs> to you like, she is not doing a good job. <laughs> like, she's just not doing a good job here. She's saying all the wrong things. And yeah. I'm like, it's kind of funny because it's like, dude, just play the game, dog. Like, <laughs> like the way you're playing it is not yeah, working. She's like threatening and like, I'm going to send people to kill you. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, don't you remember what you did to get here? Like, <laughs> there's nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that are left are are not here you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. they're far away from you they don't even know that you're here <laughs> right <laughs> which we'll get oh, to that like, part but yeah like it's weird and then like you know she she seems like she's having a friend or someone who's like trying to like get her up to speed to avoid conflict especially from what we know about like these forced labor things i think they just kind of play on the trope of what you expect at these kind of ruthless places um, yeah. that if you're not working you're basically useless to them and they're going to just beat you into submission which yeah. is what happens uh, <laughs> yeah. it's it's really intense especially for like it's weird in it it's weird in an intense way because you normally don't see like the ruling figures fall so far from grace in the yeah. in these stories i think the closest thing we've ever seen to this is is cersei's like walk of yeah. shame but even yep. that is not as brutal as this in some ways because it's it's so just like nobody cares. Like there's no yeah. parade in the streets. It's just like, hey, you we don't know who you are. And even if you you could say you're royalty, but that doesn't mean anything to us. Like you still have work yeah. to do. Like you're the right. same as everybody else, regardless of what you think you are. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> two two parts of that. And I love I love that uh comparison with Cersei. Um, because Cersei's, you know, it took place in um i can't remember the name of the kingdom but it took place where she ruled right mm -hmm. so it was like her reach was immediate like everyone there knew who she was so that was like everyone around her but this had the feeling of queen kane's rule it was almost so distant that they like they knew who she was but like almost were indifferent to all of that because they, they were so far removed right it was like more so, of an imaginary figure not like a real like a real figure like yeah, they like, knew there, there was a ruler there, but it wasn't that, like, it meant anything. Like, it, her rule didn't extend to them, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. It was, like, almost like everything they heard of her was a rumor, almost. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's how far it was. So it was interesting. So it really was like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, you know, they, or they might not even notice. At this point, they didn't, I don't think they even knew that's who she was. Um, but even still, and then, I, I don't know if you felt this. But did you feel bad for her? I kind of was like, damn, I feel bad. Like, yeah, I feel like I, she I really... really... When she was getting beat, like, the second hit, I was like, ooh, okay, this is... I don't know, like, this is... I, it felt like another level. Like, it's not just, like, the... It's like the legacy of, like... This whole episode kind of has this theme of, like, legacy and, like, lineage around it. And, like, how you were raised and, like, the environment you're raised in kind of predisposes you to like your character and we'll get to this because this is related to boots is really what, what drives this but it, it just feels like this weird thing of like the just desserts of your of your life kind of catch up to you at some point and it's not your fault in a lot of ways and it's like all these questions of like the site and then the royalty thing and then like seeing the juxtaposition too of like how queen kane's story is developing and then now magra as like the other half of the ruling family, you know, and they're just complete polar opposites in their like wielding of power, where like Magra doesn't want it at all. Um, and part of the reason that flashback happens is like, kind of her telling the story that she knew that her sister wasn't going to be a good leader, like it was all going to go to her head um, yeah. because she didn't feel worthy of being a leader, like living in her father's shadow. And it looks like, too, I mentioned this that their age difference is quite significant um, yeah. by maybe 
15 years. I'm totally guessing, but it looks Probably close. It's got to be close to that because in the flashback, Maugre looks maybe like eight or so. Um, yeah. And Queen Kane's probably in her early teens to late teens, maybe. But again, it's really hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, they don't specify, but it's it's large. Like the age gap is like she's clearly the younger sister. Yeah, like by by a significant amount. Yeah, um, which is which is telling that. Um, I guess we're not skipping ahead, but it's telling that in the flashback, um, and as Margaret's explaining this to Tamaki June. Um, he basically tells her like you're the one who needs to rule mm -hmm. right and it's like weird that you would go to the younger that significant because i don't know if you mentioned this but the father's passing away yes um sorry I yeah I, don't, I didn't mention that but <laughs> yeah yeah but um that's i don't know what he was passing away from but whatever it was he's on his deathbed and he like whispers to margra when she's again eight years old not, i'm pretty sure queen kane is like not queen yet but like sitting right there but like just out of whispers reach um oh. that he tells Margaret you you need to rule not her um it's just interesting because it's like you're gonna entrust that with like your eight or however year old yeah. daughter at this point it's interesting I mean it's a heavy thing right to be like okay you're barely old enough <laughs> to take yeah. care of yourself and now you're like entrusted to take care of everything um yeah. And I think it, I think that's super informative to Queen Kane's character, and I think that's why it's like maybe it feels so hard that she's be like being treated in this way in some de to some degree because it's like here she was and had the weight of the world on her, and it's not that she didn't want to do well; it's just that she didn't feel like she could, and even and by trying too hard, it like pushed her to the uh, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's like she's a like weird paradox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know. There's like sympathy there, even though she's clearly like delusional. You know, she's, yeah, crazy. <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's just like watching that, I was like, damn, I feel like, as you're saying, it's like she doesn't really know any better. Like she keeps calling, like, I'm going to have my people kill you. You'll pay for this. And it's like, dude, you're not in that position. And like, you don't even have a place to go back to. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you're seeing someone who's clearly unhinged um like clinging to the last thing that made them feel secure yeah. but they're in a drastic dire situation so it's like i don't know i feel like you can't help but feel bad yeah even though she's sucks. it's like maybe yeah. that's what makes that flashback hit home that much more because it's like oh there's the inciting incident that informed queen kane's character all the way up until this point yeah you know it's why she feels so betrayed and then to mock to june story kind of spirals from there too because Magra calls him out we're kind of pushing past that flashback now where Magra calls mm -hmm. him out and says you could have changed the, the future of the world you could have said yes when you said no and it would have been everything would have been different and then so because he said no Magra's like I'm leaving and then she he accused Magra of taking the queen's favorite consort Jerla Morel and she's like you know that wasn't the truth it was like they had a thing and there wasn't it wasn't that anyone stole anybody it was that they had a relationship and they left together because that's yeah. just what they felt was right it feels a little bit like romeo and juliet but in like a backwards like we don't know too much about what happened there maybe we do yeah. find out more i'm not asking you to spoil anything but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but no i feel like it does it's just like it, okay so the the dynamic here if anything thickens because it's like oh not only um did did Jordan Morrell sorry I forgot to say Jordan Morrell run off by himself he ran off with the queen's sister and the queen right. loves him and it's like oh shit like damn and that and she has his kids right queen Kane is probably like oh they're supposed to be my kids yes so it just adds this layer and you're like oh shit like this is not just a random woman this is her sister right um it makes everything more complicated right like it's just yeah. now everything isn't just like this story of like containing sight from like a religious zealotry type thing like that part is still there a little bit but it's not like everything's so much more confusing and blurry than it has yeah. been up to this point 
yeah. <laughs> if anything, it's like getting more confusing. Like, damn, what's <laughs> like what is really gonna happen here? Yeah. Um, and the question I have is like, does Queen Kane know? Has she been hiding it that she knows Magra is still alive? Or yeah. is she, you know, none the wiser, just like Tamaki Junas? Um, Maybe she just assumed that what? she would end up dead. You know, it's like, well, they left together and they left the safety of this place. And safe to assume you're not going to make it because most people right. don't. You know, right. I mean, just using Queen Kane's situation as an example, right? Like, clearly yeah. it's very dangerous to go out in small groups in this world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't last long. Um, so, it's, it's interesting. And it's just, it's that, that theme of, well, well, we'll see, but like Queen Kane is going to feel betrayed, you know? Like, yeah, I, I would see, so. I would say so. Yeah, more so than she already does by not just Sherlock Morell leaving her, but now leaving her for, for her sister. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And then continuing on the theme of betrayal, which I feel like that's a heavy, yeah, heavy theme of the show and even this episode. Mm -hmm. But moving forward with um, Boots, where he's bringing them with the um, to the cave, you know, he's to the cave or whatever, you know what I mean? And he just he ends up locking him in this cage, and then send it, the cage is an elevator, and he sends him down into this cave, and it's like completely dark. And it's interesting because you brought up that that removes um, Haniwa and Kofun's like advantage, right? Now yeah. they're all in the same playing field um but yeah I, if you want to i don't remember what boot said to them but he just he said the left field yeah he he kind of said it was like one of their tribes hideaways or something like that it kind of lies to him and you yeah. don't really know why i don't know it felt off to me like he felt way too familiar about the place and this whole situation and then he kind of just go, they go in there and all of a sudden the door closes and they're like what the hell's going on and he's like, don't worry, it'll be fine. And kind of just being really dodgy the whole time. I'm just like, what is, this is so weird. I was like kind of right. angry at the character. I'm like, dude, this guy's a douche. Like, <laughs> cause I'm, just, I don't know. It just like, they didn't need to do anything that they did in the last episode. And now at the first opportunity, he, he lied already once, like as the audience, we know that. So I was already annoyed at that part. And then he immediately lies again. And instead of like, he's just looking out for himself and i guess it just felt weird and i was like what is going on here like what is he playing at is kind of what i was thinking right because like if he's yeah. playing this game and then he sends them down he, he's still got a whole army to like fight somehow <laughs> you <Right>. know <laughs> like it just seems so strange um and it's just like uh, it the what's the other one then it, I guess Kofun's reaction is kind of closest to what the audience reaction would be, where he gets really upset at Hanwa. He's like, you believed yeah. him and you, we accepted him because you said so. And now look what the fuck he got us. You know, like he swore. Yeah. I think it might be like one of the first times he swore, um, if I'm thinking correctly. Oh. You might you know, be right. I, I don't remember him being angry like that, you know, up right. until this point. Like normally he's pretty level-headed and now he's like, God damn it. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, um, it's because it's... To cut you off real quick, no, you're good. but like that tension that they've had, it's like minor, but it's there where he's like, you know, more passive and she's more like, you know, headstrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and they ultimately, if you, it really ultimately went with everything she wanted this whole time, you know what I mean? So he's pissed. He's like, we've done everything you wanted and look where it's got us. Like mom's gone. We're trapped down here. Like yeah. he's like, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> Because, I mean, when you're in that kind of situation, you look for someone to blame, right? For sure. Um, so that's what he's doing. And it's, it's showing that, you know, he he's not always passive. He can <laughs> he can be pissed. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, I kind of, I was surprised in a sense that, I, so when I first watched, I thought it was going to turn into, like, them actually, like, I yeah, thought that fight, was going to be fighting in some way. Yeah. yeah. Which I feel like it might, it might still come, but um, I just was like, oh, I think this is when like Kofun's really going to explode. Cause like, again, mom's gone. We're trapped. What do we do? Yeah. I mean, it's like you talk know? about three strikes and you're out kind of thing. Right. Like there's just <laughs> right. so much going wrong in this situation. I do. I do like the element that they brought in that now they're all in the same playing field. Mm -hmm. They're kind of stuck. Um, and what this does is it gives breath. So, 
smart writing here, but it gives breadth for them to introduce another storyline. Yeah. Because while they're stationary, it's not like too much going on that you're you start getting confused, and I think that can happen in shows when they start introducing all these different parts. And I think a lot, not a lot, but maybe some people in Game of Thrones might have felt that because like mm -hmm. there's like five yeah. or so stories going on at one time. And I heard in the books, it's like really hard to follow. Yes. Um, it's very so, hard. <laughs> yeah. So for, for ease of viewing, I thought that was really smart because you're like, when you switch back to Queen Kane, you know that they're still in the cave. Like, you know, they're stuck. You know, mm -hmm. their goal, they're trying to get out. But you you're, you can safely assume, safely assume that they are still there. So it's like, this, it's smart to introduce a new story with Magra at that time. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't actually catch that part, but it makes sense. Um, it's similar to like the the way the river scene worked, where you know you know they're on the boat, you know they're traveling down the river, but not everything on that is going to be interesting. Um, right. So yeah, that that is a good point where you are now seeing these other threads develop. Kind of gives them space to be able to show that in real time, rather than like assuming things are happening or just have other things that are going on. Because I think in this episode you finally see how these the separate storylines are, are more connected than just like, you know, the cat and mouse game that's been going on this, this whole time. We've kind of already alluded to the, the whole combination of Queen Kane's story, which is, but basically the, the, the Kane kingdom, I guess, cause that's their last name. Um, yeah. How it's all related to the children and the site and all of these choices that have basically spanned the last two decades. Um, and I, I guess from there, they get locked up again once they hit down the elevator and they don't know what's going on at all. And they had heard voices, but they're knocked out so that they can be put inside of a cage. And they allude to some world building here where they say some tribes basically escaped to underground and then they never came out. And that they, some of them are no longer even human, which I think is an interesting sub story that could be told. It's like, what happened to some of these? I don't know. I, I'm kind of go, go to like the um, Lord of the Rings idea of like the goblins, you know, it's like what yeah, happens yeah, to humans yeah. when you let them just live underground forever, right? Like, could you imagine yeah. there's, there's humans with no eyeballs anymore at all? Because they're already blind for one thing. So they just get rid of them completely. Uh, yeah. Just you know, fleshy, <laughs> fleshy bits over the eyeballs, kind of thing. Right. <laughs> um, that would be super interesting. Totally tangential. There's nothing to do with this story, but <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting though, for sure. Um, or just like where they go feral in some sense, where they're not even like human in any sense anymore. Really, they just kind of act like animals. Yeah. But the to continue the betrayal theme, a woman shows up. And you're kind of confused at why she's like helping them or communicating with them in any way. And she kind of immediately is like, you know, no, like I, I, if by me talking to you is already dangerous for my life. And you're like, hmm, because they mentioned that a, a boy or Paris corrects herself, says a man first and then says a boy because she's upset, which is, I think, an interesting choice to write that in there. They, she's like, I, I think I know why, who the boy was or the man that, you know, led you people here. And she kind of gives her spiel and says that, you know, the boy is my son and that the husband was here for like a few seasons and then leaves unannounced. And that in this place, you have to be left in this cage so that you don't want to go back to the surface. And she was locked in that area for like five years <laughs> before yeah. they let her out. And they're, you're like, oh boy, they might be stuck down here for a hot minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you hear this, this like, like kind of the fills in the blanks of like who's boot, like informs his character and maybe why he's choosing to behave in the way that he has. And his just overall distrust for people in general and kind of just being a, a master survivalist, which really comes down to opportunist and always doing what is in his own interest, not in the interest of anyone else around him. They're just collateral damage. And you realize that she's kind of remorseful, this woman. I don't even know. Do they even say her name? I don't think they do. I don't, no, I don't think they do. But in any, in any case, they kind of say that when they found out Boots could see, he was mistreated at every step of the way. And it was beaten. It was outcast. It was worse. You know, 
probably all the scars he got were probably from that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you kind of realize that he went out and started seeking revenge on the people that mistreated him. And that's part of the collateral damage is that anyone who's left as the people that actually treated him kind of decent, which is you're kind of realizing who this person is, which in some ways is a psychopath, I would say. And then no, yeah, <laughs> maybe not even some ways, it just is. And yeah. it makes me wonder just like the situation that they're in it's kind of the polar opposite of what happened with Hanawa and Kofun. They were raised in a completely different environment. They kept their site secret from everybody else. And because of that, they never were treated as others. They were never outcasts in a sense. And they are still just decent people. And you, now you're getting to see the reason why maybe they kept that secret. Because when you're just so treated as other, it's like, I had a thought earlier. It was, um, it's like when you're, it's like when you're being, oh my God, what is the word? It's like animosity or anger towards something yeah. because they're yeah. just different than you only breeds more of the same as like a reciprocal action. Like eye for an eye, I guess, is, yeah. is what it comes down to. It's like the only way you can actually accept other things is with at least like acknowledging it with compassion and not right. trying to, beat it down or try to attack it immediately it's like you're only expecting the same or worse force against you right yeah and i love that because to me this is the same story that uh the joker was trying to tell mm. um specific maybe all of them but specifically todd phillips in the sense of where you see um arthur fleck kind of go on his journey he's just ridiculed beat down beat down until like he snaps Right. That's literally the same thing that happened with Boots. They, I mean, they to the point where they don't even have a name anymore. Like, he becomes Joker. His name is Boots. Like, Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I he don't just know has, like, a, an object. He, I mean, yeah. maybe he's the boot, you know what I mean? Like, they, they call right. him Boots because he's just been beaten down. Right. But, and then you see the, you know, the dichotomy there because now it seems like Hanewon and Kofun are in that Bruce Wayne role where like mm -hmm. you can have similar situations but if you just you know take different steps in either way you have completely different outcomes um and so I mean it's tragic um but I mean you're, you're seeing like what was laid out you're seeing this person who I don't if he has a motivation we don't know it yet right but it almost seems like he doesn't have one like he's really just kind of he just wants respect <laughs> like really like yeah he just doesn't want people to be mean to him so he's like searching for power as like an abstract but and you like kind of see him thing. play that game too if you want to elaborate at like the next scene you see him in yeah yeah um so we'll jump there going back to magra tamakti june comes back in the tent after that conversation and he's like i found someone who is a part of your party and they embrace and they talk a little bit and boots lies again yep. um and he's like I, I couldn't find them i went to you know go look for baba voss and them and i couldn't find them they're they're gone um and she's like all i want is them with me he's like well i can help you here this will you know be advantageous to us like i can really help you and he yeah. says something where specifically he goes all i ask in return is one thing and his you know what he wants is he says just don't be mean to me and it's crazy. I'm like, this dude is tormented, like, mm -hmm. to to the core. Like, literally, only thing he wants is, I'll do anything you want. Just don't be mean to me. Like, that's, that's crazy. That's, like, his motivation. Just, I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? He just wants, he just to, wants to be accepted. Like, as little as, like, the, just the smallest sliver of being treated, like, worthy of, like, kindness. It's, it is tragic, right? Like, yeah. even though he's lied at all this way and you're, like, definitely mad at him, like, I like something bad is gonna happen to him seriously because like I don't know if Baba Voss is not gonna be able to hurt him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but, someone's gonna beat his ass. <laughs> yeah, <Someone>. like, <laughs> like it might take someone to stop him from getting killed, but like you just still feel bad for him because it's not like he he deserves it. Like, he wasn't born with sight, and that makes him like something with a target on his back, you know. So he, it's not like he's yeah. not without a, a humanity, but is because he was treated and. Even his mother says it like she tried to raise him as best he, she could, but it wasn't, you know, up to her at, at some point. And it's it's almost like puts all of Magra's worries in like perspective 
Cause it's like here yeah. and here it is. Like, here's that other reality that she was afraid of this whole time. It already happened to, you know, who one of their half brothers. <laughs> right. It's, cra- it's kind of crazy that it's like all within one season, this kind of this thought experiment, I guess, of like, I guess it's the nature versus nurture example kind of rearing its head all the time of are we born evil are we born good or you know is it partly both (laughs) yeah it's super complex honestly and and you're seeing how the motivations play out where just what people will do to stop hurting i guess yeah especially in his case because i Mm -hmm. feel like he's hurt so much to the point where he killed his whole tribe save his mom yeah and a few whoever locked else is down in that hole with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think he locked her down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he's the reason she's down there. So it's like this dude is just hurt and didn't have any guidance at all as to what the doing the right thing is. So as much as <clears throat> to this point we don't like him, again, good writing, you sympathize with the bad guys, right? He's clearly yeah. the bad guy, you don't like him. But it's like, okay, I get where he's coming from. He's not just one note. Definitely so not. he's an interesting he's an interesting character as of right now he's my least favorite character i'll say that i don't like this dude yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? just, it was like damn you suck man but yeah and it's cool because you know now it's i don't know if this is the intention but i feel like magra they're hinting at a part where magra is starting to feel what it's like to have power yeah and so it's like relating her to queen kane like maybe they're not so different they haven't fleshed that out but it's just something i picked up on because at the end of the episode yeah then so we have to jump back sorry yeah so going back to <laughs> to queen kane before we get to my point yeah you're right um <laughs> they when she's betrayed by someone who comes up to her and she's like you know i forget the story she tells but opens up to queen kane saying like she ended up killing her husband or something like that and her family. father i think it was was it her father? Okay. Yeah. And then that's how she wound up there. I might be messing that story up. That she so, something like that. Basically, it was like she had a horrible childhood and that she basically ended up breaking and killing her yeah. father. And then Queen Kane, because she's opening up, Queen Kane feels like she can tell some of her story. But in reality, it's like, oh, yeah, my father was great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, it kind of cuts and you don't know that she actually filled in like you assume she filled in the details of who she was and then you're like oh well (laughs) that secret got out quick (laughs) yeah yeah that lady goes and tells the slave master or whatever you want to call this guy they say cutter he's his name is the cutter Cutter. yeah the cutter okay so she goes and tells him like that's queen (laughs) kane so this dude is like a word so he brings in queen kane right you know drags her and it's not like a peaceful thing <laughs> he like drags her in forcefully and he goes through his spiel you know she's still saying her mess about he'll pay for this blah 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 um and then there's this part and man i mean this is kind of brutal but like when it happens you kind of don't want to watch yeah. but he talks about how you know there's this rumor going around that um you know with the crown or whatever they bestow a like what a medallion like a or a coin? Medallion, yeah, inside the, you know, the it's like person, the just ruler's under skin. the skin, yeah. Yeah, so they, you know, he's like, let's find out if it's true. So he's feeling on her, you know, on her chest to see, and he feels it, so then he cuts it out. And he's like, Tamaki June was here before the witch hunters. Um, you know, we're going to send this to him because I'm sure they'll pay a lot for you. So they send that out. Moving forward, <laughs> back to where I started before, <laughs> um, with uh, with Migra's power trip. She doesn't have a power trip, but that what I power, think is going to happen. Power like growth, I guess, or like authority. Just hinting, just yeah, even it's author- just, like, just like small dose of authority, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because again, Boots is like, I can help you, and you'll you know have someone who can see. That's going to make you more powerful than anyone here, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm um, going back you know to Makti June and they all get the message that they have Queen Kane. Um and they're like, oh shit, like what do we do? And Boots goes up to Magra and he's like, I can help you. I know who took uh I know who has Queen Kane and she's like, how would you know that? How could you possibly know that? He's like, because they're still here. And what he looks at, he sees the shadows. Yes. It's so cool that you can see the shadows, how they're moving like actually. Um because they're like so great. It's like ballet almost. It's like it's so, so weird. Like the the one thing they did, which was such a cool cut, where they have the two walking soldiers, and then the shadows yeah. kind of lock in with the step, and then as the so- soldiers had walked by, it was like, 
gone. Like it was right. such a cool little creative trick that it's like, damn, I like that. <laughs> right. It's so cool. Um, but he's like, I, they're still here. And he's saying, let me help you to Margaret. And she's like, oh, okay. This gives me, you know, an advantage over everyone. Like you can see and you can be my eyes. So I'm just mm-hmm. wondering if that is like what Queen Kane wanted. Now Hopefully. Margaret has it. Yeah, you know I could totally I mean? see that. Like, um, it's like having that I, ability to like wield something that's incomprehensible to anybody else. Yeah, you know, that taste of power. It's like you know? analogous to like being able to wield like atomic weapons or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> At the push yeah. of a button, you have you know something that's godlike, right? <laughs> right, literally. Um, and I guess the, yeah. so the other part of this too is, is we, I didn't even, I don't know why I didn't mention it, but basically Boots's mother says that I want you to kill my son and she lets them out of their cage. And so you already know that going into this whole scene and the power dynamic. So it's kind of setting up this like confrontation already. Not that Bob Voss or anyone would need motivation to go after Boots at this point, but (laughs) it's it's further fueling that 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 wedge between them because magra is assuming he's still on their side because there's no reason not to assume that from her perspective and so there they escape and which is a really intense scene i would say they find an elevator and a kofun is kind of describing what the mechanism is because baba voss has no idea what an elevator is or how to operate it <clears throat> and just like the low light scene and just the claustrophobic of like tight tunnels it's a really kind of jarring scene like it's really tense like that whole sequence of like them escaping these tunnels or this cave is is really crazy i would say and you kind of feel the weight of it and just like you don't really know how they're going to get out of it <laughs> to be honest yeah. uh, up until they get out of it kind of thing um it's really brutal i guess because it's just so like just scrambling at everything just to just to survive um but you know that once they do get out it's like okay gloves are off and now we're going to find uh boots to figure out what what the hell his his deal is and also yeah. hoping that magra is still alive but i'm not sure they're they're even that's even on their radar right now just can, given the context right yeah but i mean that scene so I love that scene. <laughs> I remember right before it happened, I was like, yo, this scene is dope. <laughs> but I was like, I had almost thought um, Baba Voss was going to fall when he was climbing up yep. the thing. I was like, oh, damn, are they about to... Because remember in the last episode when we spoke, I was like, it's kind of interesting who the protagonist is. And so I noticed mm-hmm. that on my first watch at the same point. And so going into this episode when that was happening, I was like, oh, is this when they're going to like yeah. answer that question? Um, and then they didn't. Again, everyone's watching this, so it's not a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> but um they're on season two right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean that I'm, I like how it ended and again they introduced the three story parts and now since you kind of know what's going on with Magra, you know what's up mm-hmm. with Kane, now they're out of the cave. So now it's like a seamless transition between the three, the A story, which is still Baba Voss and the kids, the B story, which I believe to be Queen Kane, and then the C story, which is now Magra, which is going yeah. on with her and Boots. Um so you can just it's just gonna be interesting how this all comes together, right? Yeah. Because Magra's technically has her allegiance in a sense with Boots because he's like, just don't be mean to me. So she's probably gonna start wanting to protect him, right? Yeah. Baba Voss obviously is like, fuck that dude. <laughs> and, you know, and Haniwa and uh, Kofun too. So that'll be an interesting dynamic. And then you have Queen Kane who's like, fuck everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just, it's interesting. But uh, this episode did a good job of like splintering off what's going to happen next. Yeah. I, I can see that this episode could seem boring to some people too. But I think it... It says a lot like about the conflicts to come. I feel like this is kind of one of those ones that's like planting seeds for issues between the core characters. And maybe even more so now is like you kind of see like the different roles each of the character fulfills in the story from like an archetype standpoint. Where like Baba Voss is the fighter and he's like the action sequence. And then it's like Hanwan Kofun are kind of like these the 
protagonist that we as the audience relate to more so because they, they can see and we can see. So we feel like they do in a lot of ways and, and whoever you fall on from a disposition standpoint as a character mm -hmm. you enjoy, right? Yeah. Then Queen Kane's character kind of is like this power hungry kind of just maybe maybe feeling the weight of the world or the weight of their responsibilities and failing at every point. And maybe that's why yeah. we relate to them from an audience perspective of just like, you know, trying to fill your shoes, but always falling short. <laughs> it's yeah. heavy. Um, I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's incredibly well done. Is how well they have paced this is to to me because it's keeping you buckled into the driver's seat for <laughs> every episode. Yeah. It kind of feeds more. Maybe if it goes down a little bit, it's like okay, don't don't worry, we got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they do a great job. It's like a nice you know roller coaster ride where like it when it slows down, it doesn't stay slow for long. Yeah. Um. So the pacing is great. It. I mean, it's. I binge watched it the first time, so it's easy to just go into each episode. Yeah. Um, and then again, in a week by week sense, which is how the you know release is, it's gonna keep you like I can just imagine if we watch this episode, we'd be like, and we had to wait a week, we'd be like, oh shit, <laughs> like, you know. I mean, that's um, how I'm experiencing it. So yeah, I mean, I really, yeah, I really yeah. do feel that. So it's yeah. it's very interesting to me because there there's so much there, and it's just I find myself under trying to understand the themes of the characters and like where they're going with it in a, in a lot of ways because there's just so many points to talk about i feel like we talked about a lot of different themes from betrayal to legacy and how you're raised right like it's just yeah. a lot of these things that at the end of the day it's human like it's very human and you end up empathizing more so than you can just broad brush things and say good bad you know and just yeah. <laughs> the, the, there's yeah. not as clear of buckets in this story at all and more so now than there ever has been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that's a good story. That's the recipe for a good story. And I think that is where we'll leave it for episode six. <laughs> I think so. <laughs>